Black, I'm Captain Xavier, and this video is about a month overdue. This is from Afterworld's Fall 2018, which I meant to have posted a week after the event, and then life happened. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of the video for that. First thing that I should probably warn you all is Afterworld's is adult-themed. It's adult-only, it's 18 and up. Um, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of foul language, uh, there are recre legal recreational drugs allowed, drinking, marijuana, smoking, all of that is allowed, which is why it's 18 and up. And uh, there is some adult language in this video. Some of it coming from me, if you've ever wanted to hear Captain Xavier utter a bad word. Now's your chance. Uh, but be aware of that if you're, you know, a small child. You probably shouldn't watch. You're going to, but you shouldn't. I said you shouldn't, and therefore it's not my fault when you do. Anyway, let's take a tour of the site. Here's another fun structure here in Afterworlds. We have Fort Lostinwood, established in... 2037 by the ACR and it, it I, I don't know how actually defensible it is I've never actually taken a close look now I'm curious I assume it's actually possible to get up onto that second floor and have the ability to shoot oh yeah and yeah, there's a ladder cool so it's actually a, a defensible fort very cool I don't know how far back it goes but it's nifty Across from it, we have what will eventually be Neutral Town. Sanctuary will be Law Town, this will be Neutral Town, and then what used to be Citadel is going to become Chaos Town, and there will be, obviously, then three major factions probably fighting against each other, and it'll be interesting. But this one is going to be fairly defensible, too. They're building really fairly tall walls all the way around it. So, ongoing building projects here is one of the neat things about this place. Here we have crossroads. Many people die here because everyone tends to run into each other. That road leads back to what used to be Citadel. I don't know what it is now. That way leads to what used to be the cultist's camp. Up in that direction is raider camp. We'll go take a look at some more of them. This is Degen. It is another well-fortified location. They've got Guard towers, they've got gates, it's walled all the way around for play area. Uh, this is, like I said, Degen. It is a non-human only settlement because those little orange flags indicate that this is part of the rad zone, which means it's radioactive in there. So unless you're a mutant, an android, or undying, if you go in there, you'll die. So that's a fun faction to be a part of. And this is Haven. It's also another fully walled establishment. Uh, it used to be one of the major NPC towns, but it has largely been dismantled from when I first played here. It used to be much more fortified, uh, but it has become a much simpler woven wall defense. It is still thoroughly defensible, but not as much as it was. It also used to be, like I said, all NPCs is where you'd go to get quests or uh, buy things from NPC characters so you could get weapons and ammo and that sort of thing. And I don't believe it is anymore. I'm not sure if there even is a location like that anymore. This is the backside of Convoy, which I think actually might be the NPC faction where you can buy stuff. And it's also very well defended. They've got functional raised gates and full walls going all the way around and mazes on the inside to trap zombies. And it's a really neat, really neat base right in the middle of the place. Here's the other side of Convoy with their another door designed to funnel baddies into kill zones. and with gates and all that, and people fighting on the inside, as you do. And right across from Convoy, we have Sanctuary, which is the biggest of the structures. Long <laughs> walls going all the way down. Shooting ranges up above, big sliding door. And we have, there's a bar. This thing is actually a functional bar. There's a galley over there for food. There's, I believe that Ernie is a healing station. And then people have actually built buildings. Places for, and then there's, whole, there's a whole barracks for the ACR in here. There's lots of space for camping and shops. And I don't know if all of it is actually functional anymore, but it's all here and will probably eventually be used when the three towns are built and it's on, and they're all at war or you know, however it ends up playing out. Yeah, that's all the major structures, I believe. 
I'm going to go take a look at my camp. Going through the back door of Sanctuary, we end up at my camp. You can see my car there covered in a tent. Since I am staff NPC, my camp is out of game, which is what this little sign says. OOG area, out of game area. And it's kind of off on the side and not in the way of much traffic anyway. And we have my absurdly large tent. My brother had a apartment in New York City that was smaller than this tent. <sighs> I've got my trunks, my bed, the arsenal that I brought with me for this particular event. I'm not actually sure what I'm going to be playing this game, but I'm supposed to kill a lot of people. So they told me, <laughs> bring weapons prepared to kill lots of people. So I brought a variety, we've got some mega, we've got some elite, we've got some rival. I brought rockets, but I forgot a rocket launcher, so, so hopefully somebody has a rocket launcher I can use. Anyway, I'm going to go finish breakfast and hobnob and eventually find out what on earth I'm going to be doing here. And uh, then the murdering starts. There will be much murdering. Murder. Now, it's actually going to be almost completely different next year. That's part of how why this storyline ended up culminating in the way it did. They wanted to make some very serious changes to the site and to the, to the whole world in general, but they needed to be able to justify that in the story because continuity is very important in something like this. And so they, they needed to have a, a, a massive finale where everything came toppling down and then they could rebuild everything how they wanted. And uh, that's going to be really cool to see in spring of next year. Um, my role in this game was very different from my role last year, or last time. Last time I was just a wandering murder bot, uh, which was so was also super fun. This time I got to play a whole variety of roles. I got to play a uh, mutant revolutionary army uh, war band leader. I got to play zombies. I got to play part of the Rad Storms. I got to play... Um, a, a character I created just called an MRA Commando, and uh, most of those just went around killing people. Uh, the story writer, Pete, um, decided that he'd been going easy on everyone for far too long, and I was kind of the instrument of his wrath, as it were. Last time, you know, as, as Ant, the roving minigun turret, um, took out a lot of players, and then this game, I, I actually think I per or actually truly killed more players in this one than I did last time because last time, you know, I'd light everybody up but I just kept walking, which meant the medics could come in and heal people uh, whereas in this one, I made sure they were dead uh, which was a lot of fun and uh, they, this game had more permanent kills than any game in the past it had larger zombie hordes than had ever been seen and it was a lot of fun so the first role that I was sent out was um, as, I believe Rasp was his name and he was a MRA uh, warband leader and we you know, just grabbed a bunch of people who were in Z camp um, and went out and uh, first time we were sent out to actually find someone specific and we found him and we killed him and it was lovely uh, and then we eventually went looking for someone else and when we found him uh, word had gotten out about us so they sent a, a huge bunch of human or players got together and wiped us out it was lovely uh, we went out the second time similar results at this point they learned to to band together pretty quickly and uh, let's go take a look at that. This was the second war band. All right, here's the deal. Our troops were attacked here last night while trying to hunt down several fugitives. We're just going to kill anybody now. I don't give a goddamn who they are, what they are. Shoot on sight. You, keep us alive. You, you, deal with those goddamn shields. Yes, yes sir. sir. Front and center. Form up. Stun three. Ah, ah. Focus two. Focus one. This one. 
Ah. Immune! Two. Focus one. Disarm. Immune! Deflected three. Headshot. Melee. Immune. Melee. 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 Melee.
Yep. Tristan. Yep. Tristan. Is anyone else afraid? I'm very afraid. <laughs> got uh, tired of being attacked by these filthy, filthy wastelanders, and uh, he put together a much more powerful uh, warband. I actually armed them with my own weapons, so I knew they had good blasters, because previously we had lousy loner blasters, which couldn't hit anything. This time I l armed everyone with my own blasters, and we went out, and it was a much better fight. We still got wiped out, of course, but we went down fighting, so <laughs> enjoy. Forward! Zap! Bang! Five feet! Push forward! Zap! 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 Headshot. Three, four, eight, three. Watch the run, you are. Five. 
Repair four, repair three, repair two, repair one. I need medic, I need medic. It was right one. Kill it. Circle up. This is where we hold them. Reloading. Up. Nope, hold here. Repair five, repair four, repair. No, Rage three, melee. Rage two, triple right arm. Knock down. One, melee. 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 Now I mentioned that the the storyline was kind of the culmination of everything, and it was. It was this has been building for the entirety that Wasteland or Afterworlds has been going. Um, some of the elements that came into play in this game uh, go years back, uh, and that have been slowly worked in and built up. And you know, all of the uh, the horsemen were from were bosses from previous games, and uh, the MRA was something that was introduced previously, and the the plague was introduced in the previous game, and that was kind of the culmination of this one, and all of that came together to make this a very, very deadly game. Uh, players could make a single choice that would permanently kill their character, which is usually very difficult to permanently kill a character, because you have to die four times in one weekend, and then your character is permanently dead. Uh, and every usually every game that resets, so you could die three times every single game and your character wouldn't be permanently dead and here you die once and you don't get to come back uh which is pretty brutal but uh the storyline that came together is the, the plague was getting out of hand which it was people were afraid to loot uh, you know there was famine or not famine um pestilence was out infecting people uh he was one of the horsemen obviously and so the plague was getting completely out of hand and the risk was that it was going to spread to the rest of the world and all of humanity was going to die so um the, the doctor, the NPC doctor that was trying to stop the plague and had found treatments but hadn't been able to find any way to actually end it, finally decided that the only way to end the plague was to put a permanent shield or a, a, an, an impassable shield around the entirety of the waste and just let the, the virus die out, which unfortunately meant everybody inside would have to die out with it. Uh, there was a way that a bunch of people could be saved. They had to get inoculated. Uh, against it or cured and then they went into one of the the hives the nuclear hives to survive you know the from when the before the apocalypse um anyone who went in would be safe they would be down there until the the, the virus died out uh, but some people had to stay because they needed protection in order to get the shield working and as soon as she started the project every zombie in the waste was going to attack and so they needed people to stay and anybody who stayed their character would be permanently dead, and they knew that going in. And I didn't get to see most of it because I wasn't, hasn't been nearly as much uh, a part of you know these characters since I hadn't played since 2016, and then I've only played NPCs since. Uh, a lot of these people, they only knew each other through their characters. That's the only time they ever got together was when they came to Afterworlds and were in character. And so, when character, when players decided to stay, when their character decided to stay and fight, and uh, one of their friends decided to go into the hive, that was a friend dying. Uh, in a very real sense in some ways. They were never going to get to see that character again because that character would be permanently dead. Uh, and so there was a great deal of emotion of people, you know, crying because their their, their friends were going to die. Um, and then they found out that anyone who went into the hive, which is about two-thirds of the players, were going to become the zombie horde that then got to go wipe their friends out, which was both, I imagine, somewhat, you know, emotional, but also very, very cool because... Those, the people who chose to stay were going to get one of the most glorious deaths that Afterworlds had ever seen, and, and the players that decided to, 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 to live, to go into the Hive, were going to get to give that to them. They were going to give them that, that glorious last stand that people will be talking about forever. They actually are going to get an actual plaque, a memorial, with the names of every uh, character who permadeathed in that fight, which is just 
awesome. It's one of the, the sorts of things that I love about Afterworld. Uh, so we got to lead that attack, and here it is. to go in um I, I didn't have my camera because i was worried about it getting knocked off my head and trampled into the mud which it probably would have been luckily other people got this footage um i did get a, a couple of one particularly good kill where somebody who i'd uh, various of my previous characters both uh, the the war boss and the uh, the mra commando had killed his character a couple of times but he hadn't you know permanently died yet um i was the one who permanently killed him in the final fight uh, it came down to him and me uh, in a sword fight in the hospital, and uh, by that point he'd already you know fought off half you know a thousand zombies, and uh, was low on health, low on special abilities, low low on everything, and um, it came down to just a sword fight between him and I, and he's an, a an, a good sword fighter, but I'm an excellent sword fighter, and and I was better armed than him, so he swung at me, I I blocked it, hooked it with my kukri, pinned it to a table, and proceeded to to beat him about the head and shoulders with my machete and god bless that man he was not going to go down not swinging so he let go of his sword and just started throwing punches not real punches it, it was all in you know in character and in fun and it was just so cool that his character just decided you want some and just started pummeling me as i hacked him to pieces uh, and it was really a cool ending for that character i thought i hope he felt the same way you never know. Uh, he's actually commissioned me to make weapons for his next character since he can't use all of his old stuff because that character's dead. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting to see that stuff in action in the next Afterworld. So that'll be a fun build when that happens. So that was Afterworlds 2018. I'm looking super looking forward to 2019. Uh, I will so hopefully be playing a more interesting character than personalityless walking machine gun and murder hobos just going around killing people so uh looking forward to that should be a lot of fun hopefully uh and i may get to bring some of my men with me which could be good and bad we will see how that turns out but i had an absolute blast i hope you enjoyed watching this and uh thank you guys for watching yeah.